Okay, I'm, I just want to say that at the moment I'm alone here, two meters socially distance. Uh, but I want to say firstly that I am really pleased and proud to be here. Uh, firstly, on behalf of FAO, and thank you to the government of Indonesia and the International Tropical Peatland Center and all of the organizers for arranging this. And I especially want to thank everybody because for those who are here in person um, and the government of Korea who has enabled this event to go ahead because uh, we, this is one of the first big events, international events that FAO has been able to hold since the pandemic has started in the last two years. And I think that we are realizing actually many, many benefits and changes. We have had the, of course, the uh, pandemic has restricted us in our ability to have meetings, but it has also enabled many of our colleagues to join online. And I'm really pleased to have a welcome those who are in the room here, but especially also to those who have taken the time and effort from hopefully around the world to be able to participate with us online. I see there is quite a few of you, so I hope you are actively able to engage in the, in the uh, session here today. So today, um, let me introduce myself really quickly. Uh, my name is Adam Durand. I'm the Chief Technical Advisor for several projects working in FAO based in Jakarta. We have projects on forest inventory, mapping and monitoring, but also in the last five years, I've been able to learn about the incredible importance of Indonesia's peatlands. And so I'm very pleased and excited to be part of this uh, new initiative by the ITPC, that's the International Tropical Peatland Center, to actually launch a collaborative platform for knowledge sharing and for people to get together to share their experience and knowledge and all of us learn and uh, increase our knowledge and ability to manage and understand uh, tropical peatlands all around the world. So um, first of all, I'd like to welcome you to the official title is called could a virtual collaborative platform help preserve our tropical peatlands? It's hosted, as I've said, by the International Tropical Peatland Center, which is based in Indonesia, but it's actually reaching out to all people around the world because peatlands exist in so many countries and they've become increasingly recognized for their yeah, benefits on climate change, their importance for that, but also their biodiversity and livelihood benefits. So, ladies and gentlemen, the International Tropical Peatland Center Knowledge Platform aims to serve as a go-to place for people to be able to um, find information, upload and share their own information and learn from each other. The idea is that the platform enables people to share their knowledge and expertise and facilitates both the access to documents, lessons learned, discussions, and transfer that knowledge and share it amongst our community of peatland researchers and anybody interested in it from an academic point of view or operationally in the field. As we will hear from a number of uh, speakers across those spectrums of people interested in peatlands today. So it's, uh, it's, it's a platform where we can include information on publications, data sets, other communication products relating from peatland research, but we also hope that it will be an operational platform for, for companies, for organizations that are involved in land management that includes peatlands. We want it also to be international. While of course, we have a lot of Indonesian people here in the room and it was initiated by C4, which is based in Indonesia. But I believe, and we know that there is a lot of knowledge about peatlands around the world. And we want to share that with others. So those who are joining online, I think we have a, a great opportunity for that. Um, and it's particularly nice to be able to do it here at the World Forestry Conference, where we have so many people from different countries uh, joining us here. Um, the, the actual uh, collaborative platform is on the website, and I'm sure that we will hear the link for that later. Um, the, that is... Uh, um, it has been going since it was soft launched in the middle of last year, but this is one of the first times where we really want to reach out to a lot of people and, and build the, the, the network's um, uh, uh, appreciation and understanding so that more people are, are able to engage on it. 
Uh, in this session today, we're very honored to have uh, the keynote remarks being made by Dr. Agus Justianto. He's the Director General of Sustainable Forest Management in the Indonesian Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Um, so he will kick us off with some initial keynote remarks, which we're interested to hear. And then after that, you will be hearing from um, five panelists, expert panelists in their respective fields. Firstly, uh, my friend and colleague, Ibu Haruni Krishnawati, the lead coordinator for the International Tropical Peatland Center. Then we'll, we'll also hear from uh, uh, others, including Sufiet, who's the manager of the Data and Information Center uh, and the services provided by C4 and ICRAF uh, based in Indonesia. We will also hear from Babak Muhammad Askari, my uh, colleague also working in the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, uh, who's done a lot of work on peatlands and in particular water, uh, water issues um, and ecosystem uh, values from peatlands. Then we will hear from Dr. Choi Hyung Soon, who is the Director of Global Forestry Research Division, uh, who will be joining us online. Uh, and last but not least, Dr. Iwan Setiawan from the, the Deputy Director of the Corporate Strategic Relations from Sinamas in, in Indonesia. So before I begin our session, I want to just have a few housekeeping notes for those in the room and also uh, those joining online. The presenters will have 10 minutes each today and the session is being recorded so you can uh, you can you don't have to scribble fast and take notes and I believe the presentations will be made available afterwards um, and we want you to sh also share that afterwards if you find this meeting valuable um, for looking at afterwards. If you have any questions I would like you to take note of them we will try and get through most of the presentations and have a question and answer and good discussion session at the end. And I would ask you to hold your questions because maybe they're answered by one of the other speakers during the, during the event. Um, so hold them till the end. And if you want, you can submit them to the chat feature if you're online and we can then uh, read them out. We'll select them and read them out at the end of the session. So uh, what we're aiming to do here with this conf conference platform is to uh, present the platform, the, the new knowledge sharing platform, um, and answering, answering questions that you may have about how to use it or how you can contribute and get involved. Um, if you've got a specific technical question, please address it to one of the presenters so we know who, who, should, who you are expecting to answer it. Um, so that's the kind of uh, logistics of the meeting. Uh, it's a usual kind of hybrid Zoom meeting. I think we're, most of us are used to that now. Um, and I won't hold you up much further other than to say I'm very pleased to welcome Pak Agus Justianto, who'll be speaking on our key, keynote remarks. Um, thank you very much, Pak Agus. The floor is yours. Thank you, Pak Adam. <coughs> Distinguished speakers, uh, Dr. Choi Yung Soon, uh, Director of Global Forestry Research Division, uh, National Institute of Forest Science, Republic of Korea. Dr. Haruni Krishnawati, Lead Coordinator of the International Tropical Peatland Centers, Secretariat. Mr. Muhammad Askari, from the Ministry of Environment Forestry, Indonesia. Mr. Ivan Stiawan, uh, Deputy Director, Corporate Strategic and Relations, Sinarmas Forestry Indonesia. Ms. Sofiet Erlita, Data Information Service Manager, C4. And of course, the moderator, Mr. Adam Geran, uh, CTA of the FAO uh, Indonesia. Participant, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Very good morning to all of you. And thank you for <clears throat> joining the session, basically here in Covexial. COEX uh, Seal Convention Center, and also for those uh, who, who are joining us uh, virtually. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude and appreciation for the hard works and education provided by the International Tropical Peatland Center Secretariat, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry of the Republic of Indonesia, 
and all partners involved in organizing decision called a virtual collaborative platform help preserve tropical peatlands. At the side event of the 15th uh, World Forestry Congress in Seoul, Republic of Korea. It is my great honor to have this opportunity to address this session, to recall the establishment of the International Tropical Peatland Center as an important platform for short short collaboration and to reflect our achievement and of working together for the past three years and to share our experiences and lessons learned in managing tropical peatland to achieve our national development agenda while contributing the, to the international commitment, including raising our climate ambition. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, if I may recall in March, 2018, Global champions for climate action were scientists, policymakers, practitioners were brought together during the Global Pitland Initiative that meeting in Brazzaville, uh, Republic of Congo. Strong sort of uh, exchange commitments by Indonesian and Congolese governments were captured in the Brazzaville Declaration on Pitlands as an outcome. The declaration encourages a cooperation between government sectors to protect the benefit provided by the tropical peatlands. Since then, uh, partners and countries have been working together to mobilize political will and resources to protect the peatland in Congos and the tropics based on the best available science. As a strong sort of collaboration, the Minister of Environment and Forestry, Republic of Indonesia, hosted the ministers of Congo and government representative from Democratic Republic of Congo for a working week and to launch the International Tropical Pitland Center or ITPC in October, 2018. The ITPC was built on the principle of true cross-sector collaboration and integration, building a resilient and holistic platform for science, policy and practice, and attracting the best minds working on research and practice in this field. The center encourages and brings together interdisciplinary uh, scientists, researchers, practitioners, and other stakeholders to work together on tropical peatland research and practice as a key input for policy making. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the establishment of ITPC will be an important platform for short short collaboration and advance implementation of the UN Environment Assembly or UNIA resolution on conservation and sustainable management of peatlands. Indonesia and supported by other member states and relevant stakeholders has successfully convinced the UN Environment Assembly to agree on the resolutions, which also shows Indonesia's commitment to collaborate with the UN environment member states and other stakeholders to provide greater emphasis to conservation, sustainable management and restoration of peatlands worldwide in support of the sustainable practice of the peatland management. This could, true, this could be through capacity building, knowledge exchange, synergize and collaborative actions in managing tropical peatlands ecosystem in a sustainable manner and safeguarding peatlands ecosystem services that evolve from the interests of irrelevant international organizations, member states, and other stakeholders. Distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, since its inception in October 2018, the ITPC has hosted and participated in many international forums in its effort to promote sustainable management of tropical peatlands. Various knowledge sharing and exchange have also been organized in collaboration with both international and national partners. I'm delighted that we are now going, progressing our collaboration. ITBC is currently building a knowledge platform that can be used as a go-to place for information on peatlands, connecting knowledge and research to people. The platform 
can also be used as a tool for knowledge exchange and capacity building. Act as a media for a community of practice on sustainable peatland as well as help disseminate policy and best practice experiences on sustainable peatland management. The platform enables people to share their knowledge and expertise and facilitates the submission and of an access to documents, lesson learns, discussions, etc., to transfer experience and knowledge on tropical peatland. The peatland knowledge platform serves as a go-to place where people can find and use publicly available knowledge and expertise relating to peatlands. To conclude my remarks, we welcome other countries with peatlands to join the ITPC. We wish we will be able to gather and exchange our ex knowledge and experience directly on the ground. ITPC welcome the contribution of multi-stakeholders, including international organizations, universities, research centers, and private sectors to support the short-short collaboration and knowledge platform through the ITPC. I wish this session will provide a better understanding of synergies that derive from coordinated actions on pitlands among stakeholders, identify major gaps and limitations for safeguarding pitlands, and identify suitable policies and action for implementation for conserving, sustainably managing, and restoring pitlands that involve a multitude of actors. I thank you for the, uh, for, the, uh, for your kind attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Agus Justianto, for that uh, opening remarks and for your guidance and. Uh, inspiration for us to go forward with the session um, as the as the opening is always the opportunity for a big picture view thank you for that um, ladies and gentlemen now we've come to the part where we get into the more technical parts of the presentation uh, and without wasting time I think we can move straight into that and I'm very pleased to welcome the first presenter Dr. Ibu Haruni Krishnawati um, the, uh, you have 10 minutes, the floor is yours. Thank you. She is the coordinator for the International Tropical Peatland Center in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for introducing me. Uh, yes. Good morning, everyone, and distinguished, uh, distinguished speakers, and also the moderator uh, audience who are joining us here in this room and also joining us online. Uh, thank you. Uh, there will be the opportunity for me to share uh, about the development of ITPC knowledge platform, connecting knowledge and research to people. And I'm Haruni Krishnawati, as introduced by the moderator, Mr. Adam Jaran, uh, coordinator for the ITBC Secretariat, but also uh, I am the uh, principal researcher. As mentioned earlier by the, uh, Dr. Agustianto, that uh, ITBC knowledge platform uh, is a go-to place for information on pitlands and provide space for users uh, that we can browse, search, and also contribute to a variety of knowledge products. And the platform actually has two main users, a knowledge user and also the knowledge providers. The knowledge user can be a researcher, academics, policymakers, uh, student, and all members of the public seeking reliable data to build and boost their own analysis for their own needs. And also for the knowledge providers, 
It can be research organization, government agency, and private organization. The objective of the knowledge plat platform is the first, it can be a tool for knowledge exchange and capacity building. And the second, it can act as media for a community of practice on sustainable peatlands. Third, it can help disseminate policy and best practice experience on sustainable tropical peatland management. It can to, uh, be promoting the birth of new knowledge on peatlands. It can enable secondary use by disseminating and communicating available knowledge, of course, on tropical peatlands, and to increase the awareness and discoverability of peatland related open data. And of course, it will be a place to provide a platform on which to list, capture, and showcase all relevant and publicly available knowledge relating to peatland information. The APTPC knowledge portal, if you can see here, this is the, the inter platform and how the people uh, interaction. And this diagram here illustrates how people use the knowledge portal and how the portal platform interacts with other platforms. Who are the users and what and how the platform are interconnected, how to manage the contents update and et cetera, and uh, alternative workflow, how uh, the updates are managed and when partners cannot afford. Next. Yeah, this is the, the architecture of the platform uh, consisting of knowledge repository and then expert directory. And in the future, we would like to have the collaborative platform. Uh, rep, uh, knowledge repository uh, consisting of the, the outputs and activity related to the pitland information and also cover the metadata on publication data set and et cetera. While expert directory, uh, kind of expert database providing profile of the expert and links to their work available online. Expertise group per subject and subject. Uh, and also uh, maybe some of you already familiar with uh, legally, but on specific subject. And this is also be tool to enable people to reach out to the expert. And collaborative platform, uh, community, of practice forum and maintain log of discussion for future reference, uh, access privilege and tools to enable people to discuss, consult and share information, idea and thoughts. Next, uh, this is the entity of a relationship. I will not be uh, talking about this, but uh, this is the behind the scene, how the, the platform has been uh, developed. Next, please. And. The most important thing of this platform is how we can uh, build and we can interact with the expert. And we have the, the, the structure of expert directory uh, and skill consisting of education, qualification, how they uh, position and uh, whether they are members of the uh, affiliation and also some other profiles that uh, will be uh, potential to be included in the expert directory. Next, and we have so far about more than 2000 authors uh, or expert list in this directory. Of course, it can be more because uh, we are having uh, more uh, interaction or more contacts with many, many authors, many, many experts on peatlands. And of course, we need to comply with GDPR, General Data Protection Regulations, to get the permits or permission from the authors, from the expert, uh, to add their details on the website. And this is uh, just uh, the example of uh, how we can meet pitland experts. Next. Uh, this is, if you can see, the expert by country origins or the uh, a lot of countries with peatland that can be uh, joined here. And of course, they are, we are open for anyone, for the audience here uh, to be part of this uh, expert. So we can have the build of a huge expert for the tropical peatlands. We can interact uh, directly with the expert. Next. And this is just uh, the, 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 the expert information, which is being managed uh, using FIFO. And this is actually open source software. And 
an authority for representing uh, scholarship and enable the discovery of research and scholarship across discipline. I think our uh, college uh, for the next speaker will be having a uh, lot of experience uh, based in uh, Soviet, will be having more experience on this. Next, please. And the information on the expert, we can be a profile skills related with books and all uh, publication with each have alt matrix uh, with score and citation numbers and showing to highlight the popularity of the publication, how uh, they serve the users. We can, uh, we can click for each uh, author, for each expert. Actually, this is just an example. Next. And the next word, we can see this is still, uh, if the expert or the authors already have a lot of networks, then the, the figures here can be like, uh, what we call it, uh, quite complicated because they have a good network. It is indicating that uh, the expert or the author have a very uh, broad not, uh, network. And yeah, we can, we, we, can, we can search later on in the ITBC website, uh, tropicalpitlands.org. So we can see uh, which expert, which author actually has been uh, put or give the permission to, uh, to the ITBC to be put uh, all their details in this. Next. And this is the map of science uh, provides a representation of the research area of each profile as a map of science. As you can see here, the size of the bubbles indicates the relative numbers of paper in that area. And the colors indicate the subject area. And the connection on the maps indicate the author tendencies of author in each of the discipline. And we can see here the disciplines are grouped on the map by uh, co-author tendency. I think uh, for, for scientists, for, for researchers, for practitioners who have a very keen on knowledge on peatlands, I think will be great to have this kind of uh, maps on, on the web. Next. Uh, what we have done uh, with ITPC, with the current developments, uh, that's uh, at the moment, we are still in a static mode. Uh, access as metadata and the current feature is to encourage outputs discovery expert finding and network analysis and next what we expect it can be dynamics so we will add have additional function and feature that made the static directory becoming more interactive so it's experts it's uh, knowledge providers can interact directly with knowledge user and knowledge user would like to have more uh, interaction with uh, with the expert with the actor directly can use this platform this this uh, the the next step that we are uh, will be moving forward uh, to the development and of course we are inviting data providers uh, knowledge producer to submit their work and make it available to the public under a grid, of course, under a grid data sharing protocols. I think that's all the uh, next. Yeah, we can share regarding the, the development of uh, knowledge platform on Tropical Pecan. Of course, we are uh, inviting the knowledge providers, whether this is from researcher, from scientists, from uh, policy makers like Pascari from private sector, uh, from international organization, from the university. We have uh, uh, Prof. <laughs> Bambang and uh, other audience who can contribute to, to this discipline, of course, under agree data sharing protocols. And uh, you, would, uh, you can go to the, our websites, uh, www.tropicalpitlands.org. Uh, you can find uh, this uh, information and you can meet pitland expert there. Thank you very much. Firstly, thank you, Iba Haruni, for going through the, the platform and uh, explaining to us right very clearly on how, what the platform is and how it works. Um, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is a slight uh, change in the agenda that we have online. Uh, I understand Agus Giustianto has another important engagement, but he wants to do a, a small, a small uh, item just now in slight change in the program. So please allow uh, Agus to come up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat Eggers. Okay, thank you for that, uh, for very much for the present and uh, apologies for the interruption to the flow of the, um, of the program, but this is a really important document actually that Pa Agus has just given, the operational plan for Indonesia's net sink uh, in the agriculture, forest and land use uh, areas. In fact, the forest, not the agriculture, but the forest area to 2030. So this is actually quite an important document that Indonesia has been working on. And the peatlands are going to form, I'm sure, an important part in achieving that, uh, that very ambitious goal. So I look forward to, to reading the details about that as well. Sorry for that little diversion, but uh, now I would like to get back onto the program and I want to welcome our next speaker, um, uh, Sufiet Erita, uh, Lita, who is going to talk to us about the lessons learned from information systems on uh, in like the pl platform that we're talking about today. So, uh, Ibu Sufit, it's the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, what I would like to share with you today is actually a, a proposal for us to, or for any of pitland actors to collaboratively working, unmute, okay, to collaborate, to collaborate, collaboratively working with us in the uh, lesson learned database that is going to be implemented by uh, ITPC. Thanks. Okay, so we know that uh, less, uh, the lesson learned information is always shared uh, uh, with us and then the information that we are uh, trying to find on the lesson learned a kind of information, what, what went well, what did not go well, uh, what we can uh, do differently or what can we do for the future pro uh, project is always shared with us. But unfortunately, there's a problem uh, with the process of transferring this kind of information. Usually or very often that information of less lesson learned is published into a document, uh, uh, whether it is in a book, uh, technical report or working paper. The problem with that is that the information is not fully captured and it's not fully analyzed and it's not fully uh, validated into a, a, a repository or into a, a deposit, deposited system. And then sometimes it is very difficult to find, uh, to extract the information. And because it is published in a document, in a, uh, whether it is in a book, working paper or technical report, the metadata that we have often describe about the document itself, but not about what, it, what, what is the lesson learned, what is the best practices that we have in that document. So 
with that current situation, sometimes we are uh, we are unable to acquire the knowledge that we need. What that we need. So the access to the lesson learned is uh, uh, the access to the lesson learned is limited because of the uh, sometimes the information is confidential and it's also only available for the small group of people. Uh, the, there's also the problem of the lack of systematic uh, systematic documentation of the knowledge uh, gained from the project and uh, the tendency of the uh, organization to capture the information only for failure and the success. So the I ITPC is proposing to, uh, to you all to have a systematic process for capturing the information. What we are going to do is get uh, the knowledge gained from the Pitland project, uh, put it into a lesson learned da database. So it's not going to be in a format of publication. So we are going to have an enriched metadata specifically for the information of the lesson learned, what it is about, what's the problems. Um, so it's not about the title of the publication, but it is about the title of the, uh, the best practices. What is the problems, uh, the metadata that we are going to uh, have on the uh, uh, information system, the lesson learned information system is about the, the lesson learned itself. So we're going to have a robust knowledge in a one single unified platform, which we hope that it's going to uh, break the silos in the knowledge sharing process. Uh, probably we are not uh, aware of, uh, of the uh, while we are doing the knowledge sharing, we sometimes doing it in, in silos. So it's the, the knowledge itself is not really shared. So the document will be uh, codified and documented, uh, documented so uh, the user will uh, have a, a make sense to, uh, about the information. And we are, uh, people will connect it through the lesson learn system. Uh, so you will have the information, not just about the lesson learn or, or the best practices, but you also have uh, uh, information about whom to contact for one specific problem. And the whole things will be standardized process on the uh, lesson learned uh, using lesson learned uh, by practitioners. So please note that those are going to key in the information is not ITPC, but you. Next. Ibu Haruni has shared with you the diagram. Uh, I will, uh, I will uh, give you a, 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 desk, a glimpse description of what it is about. So the knowledge platform structure is uh, have uh, 11 asset, what we call as an asset. One is publication, data set, video, presentation, stories, and all of that. And that are go, uh, actually uh, documented into different uh, kind of databases, but we are going to uh, integrate them into three uh, profile. First is the collaborator profile, funder profile, and the project profile. The lesson learned itself will embed it in the project database. So what are we going to uh, 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 providing to you is that a story, a full story of what it is about in one project that's specific about one uh, topic or one keyword that you need. We would like to streamline the knowledge acquisition process. For your work practices and experience, you are going to process and reflect what the, what the uh, post uh, uh, project review and then uh, you're going to the, uh, document the information systematically into the information system that we are going to distribute access uh, and use. Okay, next. Uh, to give you a glimpse about uh, 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 a kind of teaser about the structure of the uh, uh, lesson learned, uh, the database is that is going to have a, a information about title and so short description of the project and how can other replicate the success or improve the project. Uh, it's going to have uh, information on best 
practices, which is categorized into topic cluster and supported by keywords. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. That was a bit of a shock for me as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Ibu Sufit, about that, uh, telling us in more detail on the, the platform and uh, some of the technical aspects of it. I think this is uh, very useful to understand how it's intended to operate for the users, both the users and also for those who are going to contribute the, the information and the data. Um, Without further ado, firstly, thank you for saving some time as well, because we are, we are pushing the time. But I'd like to move on to our next speaker, Pakma Mohamed Askari from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Uh, he is the head of the subdirectorate for the sources of control of peatland and ecosystem degradation within the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Pak Askari, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tuan Tuan, Puan Puan, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depend uh, on where you are right now. Hayun Seo. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, today that uh, I would like to share uh, the... Uh, okay, could you help me? Because something uh, on my screen. Oh, you want the... Okay, thank you. Uh, so that today that I would like to share the government pitland knowledge platform, which is sharing of Indonesia experience in pitland restoration. So basically that I would like to go through to the technical aspect of the uh, experience that we have. Then finally, I will share the, uh, uh, the platform that we already established. It is ready to be integrated with the platform which already uh, has been established uh, of the ITPC. It's not working. Okay. So that my presentation will be a quick background concept and achievement also the conclusion. So uh, just as a reminder for all of us, so basically that the black dot there is uh, the, uh, where the uh, 180 countries uh, have the uh, peatland. The peatland only uh, the 3% of the world land, however, it's storing nearly 30% of its soil carbon, including from the uh, tropical peatland ecosystem in our country, uh, which is Indonesia, which is, uh, Indonesia has uh, the largest uh, tropical uh, uh, peatland in the world, which is about 24.6 uh, million hectares, which store uh, 46 gigatons of the carbon. But we're still facing this challenge until today as the background. So thank you for the colleague from the C4. Uh, I take the uh, as the uh, background picture here. The challenge that we still have right now until today is there's a huge or massive drainage in our country. So it drying the soil, drying the peatland because 90% of the uh, peat area is consists of water. So we will dry. So it will create the dry uh, peatland and easily to be burned by the uh, local community when they open uh, for uh, uh, the area. This is the map of Indonesian uh, 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 peatland area uh, where it lies in the 865 peatland hydrological unit, as we can see from this map. It has been divided into two functions. The first one is protection function and the second one is cultiv function, uh, cultivation function. And two of them is almost 50 to 50%. Uh, regarding regulation, we have established uh, at least about 32 regulations now regarding the peatland protection and management, uh, which start from 32 years ago, which is uh, through the uh, CAPRES or Presidential Decree number 32 in 1990. Uh, 1990, uh, 1990. Then now we have already heavily regulated. So we just follow the regulation basically right now because there has been so many knowledge has been spread out and we have implemented so far. 
Uh, this is one of the long term. This is the first uh, of the uh, in the world, I think. I do believe uh, we have national long term planning for pattern protection and management until next 30 years, until 2049. So it has been stipulated uh, to our minister, and also we have also the guideline. So that at the national level we have a guideline and policy, and also that also for the provincial level, and also for the uh, district level. Uh, just to remind uh, for all of us uh, regarding the, uh, the the forest and land fire, there are three main contributing factors. The first one is the weather, but the weather is not in our control; it's under the control of the Almighty Almighty God. And the second one is the land itself, the pit land. So we have a, a very big challenge there, as I shown before. And the third one is the human. So if we want to do a good protection and management of the pit land, we have to take in consideration these three factors, which is the biggest factor is the human being. So that's why we have to go to the human being. This is a concept that uh, we say in our country, three R plus one. The first one is how to restore and preserve the water, bring back the water, because 90% of the pitland is uh, the water, and how to restore and preserve the vegetation, because there's many areas has been land cleared, also from uh, in the uh, industrial area and also in the construction area and also in the community area. The third one improve the local community livelihood because the community basically that, uh, yeah, they want to earn some money. So they just uh, do the slash and burning. And the last one, of course, that we have to do also the law enforcement. That's the way we try to face our challenge in our country. This is some of the example that we have done so far. So we put the canal blocking to bring back the water because the water in the pitland area is coming from the rainfall. So we have to stop it uh, from running out from the pitland area. And also that we have done uh, many uh, rehabilitation vegetation and also that we have uh, some commodities with, uh, where we, uh, we carry out, we try to plant in the uh, in, uh, community uh, areas. This is uh, the concept of the social transformation through what so called in our Bahasa is the Samandiri Paduli Gambut, all self sufficient and pitland care community, where we cannot leave the community. They already have known the very good knowledge on how to do the management of pitland area. Through this uh, mechanism that uh, we are in collaborative with the local government or, or local university, and then we uh, recruit the two facilitators for each of the village. Then we carry out the training for them, how to establish the institution framework for them, and also the uh, uh, rapid rural appraisal or EMAS identification uh, uh, of the problem and the situation analysis. And then we they will create what so called the RKM or bottom up planning, uh, what they want to do. So through this uh, process that we have, there's an improvement of social, economic, and environment. Also that the behavioral changes because normally that they do this lesson burning, but now that after the education, they already know how to do in the appropriate way if they want to use the area. This is some of the example that we do also the uh, how to improve the water management in the concession area, uh, just uh, showing some of the picture that I myself do so. This is a canal blocking the community area. Uh, what I've shown here that we can find all of the picture, all of the activities in the, our website. So this is, you can see there, when we put the canal blocking, the water level is higher. And in the right and the left side that they, uh, we develop also the demonstration plot. So until now that we already plan more than 67 commodities that has been grown in the area. Uh, normally that we use the three generation of the plant. The first one can be harvested in the less than eight months, mostly on the vegetables. And then uh, uh, the second uh, one is the uh, second generation can be harvested from eight to 24 months, like a pineapple, something like that. And the third one is that can be harvested uh, for more than 24 months. So that three generation of vegetation should be implemented in the, in the community area. Otherwise they will keep burning. Uh, and the, for the last one that including the Jalutung, the Soria Blangaran, whatsoever, uh, many, many trees that has been also developed there. Uh, this is one of the product of the uh, TKPPG or the Samanduri Paluri Gambut, which is goes international at the G20 in Yogyakarta a few, few weeks, few months ago. So this is the product. So that has been uh, 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 spread out and sell internationally in Bali. This is the achievement that we already have so far. So that through this moment, as per of 25 April 20, 
2022, we have restored the hydrological function of the peatland area in the concession area more than 3.6 million hectares. So it's a huge number. And also for the community area uh, from the Minister of Environment Forestry, 49,000 uh, hectares, but including for the BRG, it's already 900,000 hectares for the BRG because they are larger, because they are uh, much more uh, efforts on the uh, non conscious area. And also we have put the some compliance point, more than 10,000 compliance point that we already have installed right now. This is a distribution of the area, uh, of the community area that we have done so far. So there's also that uh, through this program, we achieve some of the SDGs uh, goals that's uh, involving the women's and also the, uh, yeah, some others. Uh, this is uh, just the example that we can see directly through our website. That's, as I said before, it's easily to be interlinked with the platform that has been developed by the ITPC. So you can see directly, this is the work we have done so far. So we can prove it to the world that we have done what we have said. As you can see here, this is a canal blocking on my, uh, my left side here. This is uh, the canal backfilling. So we put back the, 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 the pit on, on, uh, on the canal. And that's one is uh, on my uh, yeah, far way there. Uh, you can see that the, the blue dot there, uh, uh, there's some uh, white, there's uh, the soil back. So you can see there. And this is also that has been installed there, uh, the Sipalaga, which is uh, uh, from uh, our colleague from the BRG. This is a real-time monitoring in the community area. Uh, this is the uh, automatic FDRS signboard in communities area that we has been uh, installed in many places in our country. So this is a kind of simple uh, buoy, something like that. So if we put the canal blocking, it will stop the water flowing out, then it will rise up. So it's free, uh, I mean, uh, it's safe the area. So this uh, kind of, uh, yeah, a simple one. Uh, this is the correlation. You can see here, the water is be, uh, before uh, putting the canal blocking is more than one meter below the ground, but now it's rising up. Is it, uh, yeah, about 0 0.4, something like that. Uh, this is the Simatang. Uh, this is uh, one of, uh, I do believe this is the largest monitoring system in the world right now, because it's lies in the 3.6 million hectares of the consensus area, which is monitoring day-to-day -day monitoring also bi-weekly. For the day-to-day -day is using the data loggers, but for the manual one using the uh, uh, for bi-weekly. Uh, so we have installed more than 10,000 compliance point. You can see here, the red color is uh, the canal blocking. The blue dot is the manual one. The red dot is the uh, data logger and also the ombrometer. We have installed there. So it has been launched by the Ibu Mentri at the time in uh, three years ago, the ASEAN Pacific Forestry at the time, also Ibu Haruni there. This is a new platform, but this one, uh, I've, uh, I will not share that today because as it has not been launched. It will be launched soon, hopefully that by 6th of June. The CPEC, this is the latest, the new integrated information system to monitor, to evaluate, to predict. This is a dynamic modeling, the real time one. And I do believe this is the first time in the world. So you can see overlay directly here, the water monitoring level in the concession area and also in the community area and also the hotspot and fire weather index, the drought code, whatsoever. And can be used when we have to do. And we can do also predict until the next 10 days, as you can see here. So we have integrated of the system. So it will be easily, as I said, to be integrated uh, to the ITPC platform if that's needed. This is uh, just an example that mostly the hotspot now is not in the peatland area, but in the mineral soil outside of the consistent area. You can see there, so that most of the hotspot outside of the consistent area, the blue color means that the water levels is flooded. So above the ground of the, of the peatland area. Okay, thank you. And this is some other examples. Uh, okay, I will go through. Okay, sorry, the time is up. So this is some of the achievement. The point that I would like to say today that Indonesia is ready to share its experience in peatland protection management to other countries as a coherent action on elevating global climate change. And this is some of the website that you can access uh, some of the information. And also I would like to thank all of the collect which has been done collaborative for our country, including JGF, the IFAT, the KIFC, the GIZ, also the FAO for sharing the CEPAL for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Pat, uh, Ascari, and my apologies for cutting you off because you had a lot of really interesting information. And I hope what uh, what the, the slides will be available and people can look uh, later at that information. I hope if that's okay. Um, and I also wanted to keep the time at the end for allowing people to ask questions because what you presented was uh, so interesting. So uh, without further ado, though, I think we do need to move on. And I hope we have our colleague online. I hope our um, Korean colleague, uh, uh, Choi Hung Soon, is available. Can I confirm that he can hear us and we can hear him? Yeah, I can hear you. Very good. We hear you very clearly and we look forward to your speech. Let me just uh, introduce you. Uh, he is the Director General, uh, the Director of the Global Forestry Research Division within the National Institute of Forest Science in Korea. Uh, we are very pleased to have him as one of our speakers here today, and uh, we look forward to the presentation. If uh, Pa Anga, if you can, if he has slides or is he sharing remotely? Okay, we're going to share the slides from here. So we hope that you can all see them online. Dr. Choi Hyung, can okay. you see them? Yeah, I can see my file. Right. Okay, and we can hear you clearly. The floor is yours. Over to you. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Hyung Sun Choi, working in IFOS in Republic of Korea. I'm very uh, pleased and honored to present in this wonderful session on, on a very important topic. I'd like to thank you, Adam, uh, a moderator from FAO, and Dr. August Yustiano, the Director General of SFM and MEF Indonesia. In fact, uh, there are no peatlands in Korea. So the peatland is a very strange, uh, strange environment to Korean forest or ecosystem researchers. Nevertheless, we have been closely cooperating with Indonesia in the forest field to actively restore peatlands. Uh, next, next slide, please. Can you? Uh, okay. And next, please. Yeah. Peatlands also play a very important role in carbon absorption. So protecting or restoration protect peatland is very crucial. At the same time, it is also very important to devise measures to prevent, uh, prevent negative effects of peatland protection on local livelihoods. Today, I would like to explain the research contents and plans of the peatland in cooperation with the C4. Unfortunately, uh, we have not yet established a deep partnership with the ITPC. However, we expect to closely collaborate with ITPC in the future as the peatland research proceeds. Today, I will tell you uh, the contents of our research that we have been conducting to protect and restore peatlands in, in Indonesia through a joint meet, uh, project with the C4 in Indonesia. Next, please. Okay, I think you know this better than I do. Uh, simply speaking, the important thing is peatland has high carbon storage capacity. It is more than 10 times higher than that of normal soil. This means it has a high potential to contribute to carbon neutrality. The area of peatland in tropical areas including wetlands and forests from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Central Africa is 42 million hectares. And it is estimated to have accumulated about 148 giga carbon dioxide tons. Next, please. In particular, 47% uh, of the world's tropical peatlands are found in Indonesia. They exist in the form of a wide pit dome and pit, sw sw pit swamp forest in the lowlands around the major rivers. But as you see the this figure, peatlands are particularly vulnerable to damage from slash and burn, forest fires, 
drainage and plantation expansions, and issues relating to food security, moreover, are continuing to threaten peatlands. Therefore, preventing peatlands degradation and maintaining important sources of carbon strategy is crucial to fighting and resisting climate change crisis. Next, please. This picture shows the collaboration with NIFOS and C4, as well as other partners involved in this research project. Uh, to save time, I'll just skip this part. Next, please. Uh, from this point, uh, I will go over the details of our research and what I've been doing so far. Please note that this content is based on research that was conducted over the course from last year to the present. So it is not yet complete and ongoing. It includes research that will be carried out in the next four years, in totally five years. Next, please. The title of our research project is a study of the ODA application through a community development model near peatlands in Indonesia. And we wish to achieve the following goals through this project. One, technological development of the peatland greenhouse gas reduction assessment and development of a community development model for the restoration of forest peatlands around the C4 and NIFOS joint research science and technical demonstration of the ODA project for Indonesian peatlands. Uh, you can see the main subject of this project. Next, please. This is an overview of the project. As you can see, our end goal is to create a, create a forest for the recovery of peatlands and evaluating the amount of greenhouse gas reduction that can contribute to the NDC and developing a model for community development. Next, please. Yeah, our research site is a Perigi village in South Sumatra province in Indonesia. As we all know, because of the pandemic uh, last two years, yeah, our research could not go to this site, but we expect to be able to go to this region in this summer season, June or July. Next. Uh, at the beginning of the study, we faced the difficulties from afforestation in the pit area due to COVID-19 pandemic last year. Nevertheless, uh, in cooperation with the C4, we were able to make incremental progress through regular online meetings. We selected species such as Nyampulang uh, and Malapari that would adapt and grow well in our selected area. Currently, we have prepared a construction site about 10 hectares for afforestation. Originally, afforestation was scheduled for early this year, but it has not been carried out because the, the water has not drained, not drained in this area. We expect it, it will be possible to plant trees after May or June. As I mentioned earlier, the selected species are Neampulang and Malapari. They were selected because they were used as an apiculture, biofuels, and medicine, and they are used for because, because of their survival rate, rapid growth, and adaptability to devastation. Next. Second, uh, the classification of land cover with the satellite images. Uh, land cover was classified using satellite images. As you know, C4 provides uh, pitland information and the forest coverage change information. But we need to calculation of carbon storage. We need to build Lulu chef metrics exactly. So we use land cover maps provided by CGRS and S3, which are widely used internationally. The classification system of CGRS was modified to meet the 10 classification criteria of S3 land cover. And finally, through overlapping analysis with the C4's pit map, the matching point between CGRS and S3 land cover was extracted. So the most right map is a pitland area that was finally extracted. Through this, we will produce a pitland cover classification manual this year. Next, please. Third, research on community development. 
it is very important in terms of governance to carry out this project so as not to damage the lives and traditional knowledge of local communities. Uh, I'm sorry, but in this slide, there was some error. Sorry, I could not change this file. Yeah. We tried to conduct a survey on what are the major social changes of residents in this very area, risk factors, and what are the important factors for the restoration of peatlands. But the survey itself was too difficult to the COVID-19. The survey was very, very impossible and movement was almost impossible. But however, we know that following methods are very, very important in respecting traditionally accumulated knowledge and perceptions. We need to strengthen capabilities for financial support, processing, and technology. A pitland restoration model that maximizes local income is preferred through, uh, preferred through establishment of a cooperative system among regions, local governments, and local academies and donors. In addition, we will conduct a survey to identify crops preferred for the regional development model through the usable CVM method. Next. Uh, so we found that local communities are willing to accept preference, preferences and access to mar markets were all important considerations in developing this business model. Specifically, we would like to apply the agro-silviculture and agro fishery model as you know, agro silvo fishery model is to integrate agriculture, forestry, and fishing to provide a way to make a living for the communities. agro silviculture model is a way of putting more weight on the rest restoration of native vegetation. Based on research cases such as soil re-emergent, re pit soil and forest restoration, and revitalization of local livelihoods in the two models, we will apply this model through the case analysis in this year. Next, please. Uh, I have done it. I, I don't have enough time. So uh, it when it comes to achieving SDGs, we expect that peatland restoration will contribute positively to these goals. In addition, as a means of use for this, the concept of MBS is now in the spotlight. Next. Uh, and, and next, please. Yeah, to evaluate whether the expecting development model is based on MBS, we will need to check the survey period and subject, verify the survey results, and derive evaluation results for IC and the eight criteria. So I don't have enough time, I'll skip. Next, please. Yeah, next, please. Yep. As we all know, the global pandemic have prevented us from visiting the study region in Indonesia. So we mainly had to depend on the regular video meetings and emails to conduct research and maintain contact with the C4 and partners. Given this development, our plans are, one is maintaining continuous partnership with the C4 and two, evaluating ecosystem service value according to land use change scenario. And finally develop measures to expand the local resident participation and expandability to ODA projects for pitland restoration. As I conclude my presentation, I'd like to thank c and partners once again for their dedicated cooperation. And I recently visited, visited the ITPC homepage on the web several times. The platform is very well made and the directory structure was very excellent. Especially, I think the pit knowledge and experts directory was very wonderful. However, I hope that it would be more better if there are uh, researchers, emails, or other contact information in experts direction. And we hope that our research materials can be shared more widely in our future cooperations with ITPC. Our researchers will also work toward this goal with the ITPC in this area. Finally, I express my deep gratitude to my team member, Anu Choi, Aram Yang, and other researchers. And also thank to Dr. Himner in C4. Okay, next please. Thank you for your attention, Dalimarkashi.
And uh, Tara Makassi to you, uh, Dr. Sun. Thank you very much for that presentation. I think this is an exact uh, example of how something like, like this collaborative platform can allow international researchers with high quality science to come and to collaborate with other countries. Indonesia is a leading example, but I hope from the FAO side through partnerships like the Global Peatlands Initiative, we can also share this knowledge with other countries. Bearing in mind, we have uh, limited time left. We are running a bit uh, over, I'm sorry, but I will move straight on to our, our final speaker. Iwan Setiawan is uh, the Deputy Director of Corporate Strategic Relations for Sinamas Forestry in Indonesia. He is also online and I'm checking that he can hear us and speak and we set up the slides so you can start. So please test your sound, Iwan. Yes. Thank you, Adam. Uh, can you hear? I, we can hear you very clearly and yes. see you. Okay. And uh, over the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you have 10 minutes and it's, uh, we would like to be quick if we can to allow time for speakers, questions. Okay. Thank yes, thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity that uh, we can join uh, to this event uh, today. Uh, I will present about the experience of uh, our uh, activities in the field. So uh, my presentation is uh, technology implementation and commitment involvement, community involvement on sustainable uh, pitland management. So this presentation will describe how uh, the APP use technology uh, for manage the pitland and how we involve the community to work together to manage the pitland in a uh, landscape, of course. Uh, next, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, please. Uh, yes, this is for uh, introduction, uh, for information that APP Sinarmas has already set up the Sustainability uh, Roadmap Vision 2030. This, the, the roadmap is the continuing of previous SRV 2020 that has been launched in uh, since 2013. And also uh, we have for conservation policy that also launched in uh, 2013. And uh, we set up our SRV 2030 is in order to support the achievement of Indonesian NDCs uh, as well as the effort to tackle the climate uh, change. So uh, our effort will focus on three pillars. That it's the activities cover uh, in the production of forests and of course the people. Uh, and the target is we will reduce about 30% of uh, carbon footprint in 2030. Uh, protect and conserve more than a half million of hectare of forest and also uh, improve the living of a million people that uh, live around our concession. Uh, uh, and about the forest conservation policy itself, it is launched in 2013. Uh, we have commitment to, uh, pro uh, to protect the high conservation value and high carbon stock natural forest. And also we will have responsible uh, pitland management and social commitment. And also we, we will have a responsible traceable global supply chain. Next, please. Uh, for the, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is the, the achievement of uh, what our roadmap is. It's from fiber sourcing, of course, we already have 100% uh, uh, our fiber supply is from sustainable uh, managed plantation. And then 40% uh, of our fiber is uh, come from recycled uh, material. And uh, all of uh, 38, uh, 38 of plant uh, pulpwood supplier concession are uh, completed with uh, ISFMB, this uh, integrated sustainable forest management plan. And also, uh, we have zero natural forest conversion by uh, IPP since uh, 2015. And for emission, we already 29% of carbon density decrease compared with the baseline. And then uh, this is the number that uh, maybe we, we, we can uh, look. Uh, in advance. Also, we have restoration up next, please. Uh, 
forest forestation we have 24000 hectare area with uh, progress or uh, restoration and then on uh, the conservation and biodiversity we conserve protect more than 500000 hectare next please maybe we can skip uh, the next uh, uh, now we talk about the pitland uh, pitland uh, management so what what we we are doing is, uh, of course, we need to identify the the pitland uh, itself, or uh, where and where where is it uh, the location of uh, our our area. So uh, we we since 2015, actually before we, we also uh, already identified, but it is uh, doing particularly by uh, its concession. So. Uh, the method of our surveys, the, the 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 of course the the most uh, we 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 do is doing a terrestrial survey. It is direct measurement from field using our uh, optical survey equipment to determine the topographic and drilling the to identify the pit thickness. And then the next we also use the remote sensing uh, survey, use radar lidar to get the topographic information. And of course, after that, we can combine the the, the result uh, of the terrestrial and remote sensing surface. So this will be uh, get more efficient uh, method. Next. Uh, so this is what we have done in 2015. Uh, because our concession is sliced from in the three provinces in Sumatra, this uh, covered Rio province, Jambi, and South Sumatra province, and we we know that uh, in the uh, our surrounding area is also pit. So we doing the uh, lidar survey well, with uh, aeroplane, and and we have more than eleven thousand kilometer flown over uh, East Sumatra and West Kalimantan in two thousand fifteen, and then uh, we interpret it, interpret it and uh, the, the the survey and okay? uh, so we can uh, collect the topographic map for the uh, east of sumatra this is cover more than 4.5 million hectares so in the right uh, figure we, we can see the color uh, of topographic so the red one is the highest uh, place and then uh, gradually uh, Going to the sea with the color, so the green and and the black is uh, almost uh, zero from a mean sea level. So we now we 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 can understand we 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 know that uh, where is our location is in the in the pit landscape in 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 uh, uh, compared with our surrounding area. Next, please. So if we uh, make a long profile from from north to south so it is come from rio jambi and south sumatra province uh, we will know that there are uh, many domes many pit domes yeah in in in, in uh, north uh, east of sumatra in rio we we can define uh, it's about four pit dome uh, and then in jambi actually there's only a small Small area and, and, and in the in the uh, border about uh, border between Jambi and South Sumatra, there is one dome is in Perpak and Sembilang and of on and South Sumatra there is uh, one dome. Uh, not only in the the topographic the, the the black one the black line, we also in the green line uh, we identify the height of uh, canopy that cover in that area so actually uh, we can identify that actually from the uh, every dome actually there is still covered by a good vegetation yeah in 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 location so based on the lighter we, we we can see the actually uh, the dome a pit dome in sumatra is uh, actually uh, in, in a good protect and and the the uh, the canopy uh, is uh, still covered by high canopy, so it is uh, it means that it consists from the natural forest. 
So next, please. So uh, based on the topographic area, so uh, we need to 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 manage yeah, the water level because uh, we are working in a natural production forest, uh, the, the government natural uh, production forest. So uh, we need to have a plan to develop a industrial plantation forest in the uh, uh, in we, we have obligation that so we need to uh, manage the the water level uh, that should be different between the natural uh, area and then also in the buffer zone and also in the production forest so every uh, differences of 50 centimeter we set up a different zone so every zone we every water zone yeah every water zone we can manage the Water because there is a similar uh, similar uh, height, uh, so we we can manage the water level in every zone, uh, uh, yeah, um, regularly. So uh, next, please. Uh, so so this is the, sorry yes. to in, sorry to interrupt, but uh, we've reached the ten minutes. Could you, if you have a final yes. conclusion side, could you okay. just? Yes, please. Uh, next, next please. Yes. Yeah, this is uh we we saw the the uh previously please previously yeah yeah this is the oh uh, we we we, we uh, based on our data we con we uh intervene with the village uh, outside of our concession so there are uh, we we help uh, next please we help the the uh, village to define uh, water management in, in their area. We create the water zonation in village so the people can uh, manage uh, the area is uh, correctly, yeah. Uh, next. So uh, we, we have- Is this uh, your final slide? Uh, next one, uh, the conclusion. So we, we will get to the conclusion, please. Conclusion, yes. thank you. Uh, this is the conclusion. So we uh, we will have a benefit for every uh, stakeholder, for company, for village, and uh, also. Uh, so the the conclusion is uh, we need to uh, manage pitland uh, as uh, in landscape approach. So we need collaboration from multi stakeholder, and of course uh, we need uh, improvement to to capacity building to the village. I think this is the, the share of our experience. Thank you for the opportunities. Thanks back to you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for and I'm sorry for cutting you off, but I do want to leave time for some questions because we've had so many interesting uh, presentations with so much information. And thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, so now we, we do have time. We have five minutes for some questions. I'm sorry, that's less than we anticipated. And I see uh, some, some hands, already got three hands up. Can I also, pa Anga, can you monitor and see who is putting their hands up or questions in the chat? Because I haven't looked at, uh, at those, so I'm going to need to look at those first. So if you don't mind, I appreciate those who have uh, here physically in the room. Uh, Bambang, if you want to go first, and then I recognize the lady had her hand up, and I think the colleague from the back. So we have three questions here. I apologize for the colleagues online. I hope uh, we can answer those through the chat, if not already done. Thank you. Pat. Okay, uh, thank you very much. My name is Bambang Hirasarjo. I'm from IPB University, I'm working on forest fires and also uh, <coughs> greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, I have two questions. First, uh, to Prof. Haruni and also next for uh, uh, Askari. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation uh, for Prof. Haruni. But the question is, uh, you know, actually there is many, still many uh, researchers, many group, big group that uh, produce uh, research, result of research. Then how can you encourage those group? For instance, like uh, my group, for instance, we are working on fire for pit pirate to sleep for 10 years funded by NASA and also working Max Planck etc I think it's better to share uh, our publication our result uh, to your uh, platform 
second one to Pa Askari. Uh, again, thank you very much for excellent presentation. Even you say that you have, uh, you know, the uh, model that may be number one in the world. My question, simple question is how he guarantees all those things could be on the track for next several years. Because sometimes, you know, uh, if there is no touch to this project, then everybody gone somewhere. So maybe you have some suggestion on it. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Pat, for the for the question. Uh, do we want to respond quickly now to those two points? I'm not sure who's going to respond on Ibu Huruni, perhaps on behalf of the, how do we encourage the researchers? And then Papa uh, Askari, if you could get ready for responding quickly. Thank you. So Ibu Huruni, do you want to come here or take the mic there? Yeah. Uh, thank you from Bambang for your... Please. Yep. Yeah. Be visible yeah. if you stand so that you can see yourself in the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> in the... Yeah, yeah. No, in the... Yeah. Thank you. You either come here or stand so you're in the... Yes, okay. that's good. Yeah, I think, now thank, we can thank see you, Prof. Bambang, for your question. It's it's a great question that we are expecting by sharing this uh, platform that we are developing. Uh, we would like to encourage and, of course, invite the uh, pitland uh, expert, pitland people to contribute to join uh, this platform. And, uh, of course, uh, we are really uh, very welcome, uh, Prof. Bambang. And, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this will be related with GDPR, like a general, what we call it, uh, data protection regulation regarding the, uh, the details. If they already give uh, permission, we would like to put uh, everything there. But at least the published the public data uh, can be put there. And uh, thank you, Prabhambang, for, <coughs> for your uh, collaboration. And we would like to follow up this later on. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Ibu Hurani. Pa Askari, please. Thank you very much for a very good question from Professor Bambang Hero. So basically that now we are uh, on the way to establish the team who will day-to-day uh, -day, uh, monitor the activity of the website. And hopefully that uh, the website will be used as our website, not uh, our, uh, I mean, uh, that can be used uh, also for the public. But of course, there's some limitation of the access. But uh, for the uh, public, yes, there will be. Thank you. That is very good news. I think this is one fantastic result already of the collaboration opportunities. OK, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do. It's 11.30, and I'm aware that uh, we have come to the official time end, but I don't want to stop the discussion. It, uh, the room is still available here, and I hope colleagues online, you can stay if you want. I still see quite a few people here. So if you will allow us, I will continue with the two questions. I see the audience is still interested. So if we can have the next question from Ibu. Uh, yes, please and then the next question get ready and then uh, uh anger can you tell me if there's questions online uh thank you very much my name is sri lestari i work for national research and innovation agency uh i will have one question to uh choi young so uh, as you mentioned before the 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 species that you will plan in the project is uh included nyampung uh, I do believe that Nyamplung is also uh, suitable for uh, peatland. However, in some area in Sumatra, uh, the market is still, is still not exist. But uh, if we could build this kind of market, it will be very uh, valuable, especially for the community who live around the peatland. So what is your opinion about that one? Because uh, the market is still available in Java, but not still exist in uh, Sumatra. And uh, as your limitation that you uh, mentioned before, it is related to uh, the, the restriction to go to the survey. But uh, I do believe that uh, because you have some uh, uh, project uh, collaboration with LHK Palembang, uh, it will be more efficient if uh, we could like uh, 
goes through that area so that it will be more efficient. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. My apologies. Uh, was that directed to somebody in uh, particular? Oh, Pat Joy. Thank you, Pat Joy. Please answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, in my presentation, we uh, have been collaborating with the C4 in Indonesia. And uh, because we are, we, uh, we don't have uh, some information about the uh, Indonesian spe uh, indigenous species. So uh, we only have to the, uh, receive the concept or the knowledge uh, from the Indonesian researchers. So uh, you mentioned that the metaphor is not, uh, you have the, uh, some, some option or some sorts of the Malapari species. And, Okay, we uh, we will uh, uh, meet uh, the C4 partners and uh, of selection species is, is very important. So we we will meet the, our researchers and discuss about that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sun. The next question, please, from the floor. And then we have three questions from the uh, online audience, if we can take just those three. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, um, Adam. My name is Satrio Adi Vichaksono. I'm from the European Forest Institute. Uh, my question is actually to uh, for Ibu Sufiet and maybe to Ibu Haruni as well. Ibu Sufiet, because you were talking about knowledge management, and there are many different uh, types of knowledge. I mean, um, yes, there is this um, knowledge from the experts, you know, through publications and so on. But then there are also um, knowledge uh, that is possessed by uh, local communities and practitioners that are used to peatland restoration, have been conducting that for years. There's also another type of knowledge, which is uh, tacit knowledge that is often difficult to, to express. So are there plans, you know, through the knowledge platform to um, capture those kind of um, knowledge? And if so, can you tell us uh, more about, you know, ways to do so? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Angus. Well, actually, uh, the plan is uh, for the uh, for the uh, the last one for the tacit knowledge. Uh, we would like to uh, document all the tacit knowledge through the lesson learned. So, when you're asking about those three kind of knowledge, the the knowledge from the uh, the local knowledge and then the, the tacit knowledge and the knowledge from the publication. The publication, uh, the knowledge from the publication is already uh, implemented from the repository. These two is actually will be implemented or recorded through the, the, the one that is going to be implemented, the system that is going to be implemented. It's not there yet, so we can't show you on how it is going to be, but we are going to reach all the uh, partners and collaborators and also uh, organization that is interested to build this lear lesson learn inf information system. So it's going to be um, more, the, the information is going to be, I mean, not the information, the structure of the data is going to be what we are needed now. And uh, we hope that it can answer all the question, not just about the local knowledge that we gain from the project, but also the tacit knowledge that used to be belong to, not just individual, but also the uh, a small group of people like project teams or a specific organization. I hope that helps. Thank you for that answer. Um... And I know I did promise to try and get the, the online questions, and there are three of them. And I hope that the so two of those questions have been directed to Pat Ascari. So I hope he might uh, have a few minutes to perhaps even reply in the chat. I don't think the Zoom meeting needs to be closed, but I do want to just read out one part of it because I think it's really important. Uh, for those in the room who haven't seen it, uh, the start of the question was good morning from uh, Gusti Anshari. 
He says, good morning. I would like to congratulate Pakaskari for his good presentation. And he has a question about the canal maintenance blocking infrastructure. I think this, this and the other online questions to Pakaskari, we will try and answer online. Um, I am aware that some of the key people in this present in the from the uh, panel also have some other meetings starting very soon that they have to go to. So I think at this point, I'm I'm encouraging us to answer the questions that are online with an online response. And I apologize for for cutting that short. But I think we've had a very stimulating session uh, justified by the questions coming in. And I hope they can be answered online. So from from that point of view, given that we have gone over time, and I apologize for that, um, if I've not been able to keep to time during, due to so much information to share. Let me just say in wrapping up that um, this has been actually a really interesting session for me as well, uh, to be able to uh, learn about the collaborative platform. And I hope that we're also able to contribute our FAO information on that. And I would like to say thank you to all the presenters who have presented today and all of the participants who have been uh, contributing and actively participating online. Um, and finally, we come to the end of this session. And I really look forward to all of those who are interested in this collaborative platform to get actively engaged, to sign up, to contribute your information where possible, and also to learn from what is on the, on the session. So in, in final, uh, final, my final words are that we do have a small gift for the presenters, uh, please come forward at the end and we'll have a group photo. Thank you.